Club and Pensions Board Joint Subcommittee. Um, I'm sure members uh, are well aware of the sad circumstances in which we meet today. Uh, and there is provision in standing orders that um, in some of the cases where these uh, reports need to be expedited, we can do that through the Chief Exec on, on the, the say of the Chair and the Vice Chair of the Committee. Um, for that reason, uh, I intend only to take the first five uh, items on the committee report uh, and then um, get another date in the future to get the other other uh, pieces of, of work and reports brought forward to the Pension Sub and Pensions Board Joint Committee. So uh, apologies uh, for the, the shortness of the committee, but I'm sure you'll understand in the circumstances that it's the right thing to do. So, Sedent, apologies for Pension Subcommittee. Thank you, Chairman. We've got six members present and apologies from Councillor Chatter. Uh, and Sedent, apologies for Pension Board. There are five board members present. Uh, apologies from Jan Andrews and Karen Hunter. Okay, are there any declarations of interest from the Pension Subcommittee? No. Are there any declarations of interest from the Pension Board? Okay, good. We're going on to item five. Uh, Henry, there will only be the one item a day because of the circumstances that I've, that I've shown in the, last, in the last day. I'm not sure if you're aware, uh, but I'm sure Stephen will inform me. Oh, yeah. um, so this is a report by external audit on the 2018-19 audit of Dumfries and Galloway Pension Fund, report by Head of Finance and Procurement. Um, the, the members, in, look, I'm sure, will have had the external auditor's report uh, in 2018-19 by Grant Thornton. And Joe's here. Uh, I've asked him not to do a presentation, but asked him to be open for questions. Um, so, members, over to yourself for any questions. David. Uh, thanks, Chair. It's just, uh, could we get clarity on this McLeod Sergeant case? Just say exactly what it means to us, please. So, can we get some background to the McLeods? <coughs> Thanks. The, the McLeod case um, was a, a legal case that was held um, down south with the UK, um, against the UK government. It was a, an ongoing legal case. I think the original decision had been back in December 2018. Um, the impact on the Council's financial statements, the draft accounts were prepared on the basis that the McLeod um, remained uncertain and the impact of the McLeod case remained uncertain because the ongoing case was subject to appeal from the UK Government. On the 27th of June uh, 2019, there was a decision uh, by the courts um, to uphold um, the original decision and reject the UK government's uh, case for appeal, and therefore the, pension, the, the McLeod liabilities then essentially crystallised, if you like, or be became more certain across local government pension schemes. The actuary has uh, revisited the assumptions to incorporate the impact of McLeod um, within the financial uh, within the. the pension fund accounts and that is therefore disclosed within your overall liabilities note within the financial within the financial statements it doesn't actually impact on your net asset statement it's a disclosure within the pension fund accounts um, within the notes in terms of the financial value um, to the pension fund we'll just get the appendix uh, I think it was six six million six million pounds was the impact of, of the McLeod case the pension fund assumptions um, were revisited uh, for, um, to reflect the, uh, some of the other actuarial assumptions at the same time, and that's therefore been updated as, as well. Okay, any other members? David. Thank you, Chair. Uh, my, my understanding was that significance of that case, uh, apart from its own uh, decisions, uh, was that the, there was a breach to the cost cap that had been put on hold uh, pending the outcome of that case. Uh, so is that still a still of interest or, or still something that needs to be considered? Uh, 
my understanding of that that is two separate issues mm -hmm. that are both still being looked at. So again, as the McLeod case becomes, well, as yet we don't know what the um, sort of compensation that will be agreed to members as part of the McLeod case will be, that may impact on the cost cap. So I think both of them are still emerging issues and won't probably become clear until the McLeod case, if we know what the compensation will be. And then I think they'll revisit the cost cap after that. So again, just now it's a bit uncertain. So we don't, but it is two separate issues. David? Just a supplementary one then. In terms of the audit though, given that it's two separate issues, both for potentially with impacts, you've only dealt with one of them in the audit report, you just haven't dealt with the other one at all. Uh, is that not something that should maybe have been considered? In terms of the impact on the financial statements, um, where we have or where the accounts have been updated um, reflects where there's certainty. So originally the McLeod case within the first draft accounts was deemed as being an area of, of uncertainty and therefore wasn't included within the Hyman Robertson actuarial valuation. As the case developed and it became more certain, there was therefore essentially crystallised as a, a provision within the IES 19 actuarial valuation that's reflected within the, within the accounts. Um, and that's why it's disclosed within our annual ex external audit report. Okay, any others? Can we then go to the recommendations then? Um, we'll be asked to obviously receive the external audit report, which you've all received as detailed in Appendix 1. Uh, two point two is to note that no issues have been identified in the course of the audit which have impact on the fairness of the financial statements submitted for audit as detailed at paragraph 3.1. We need to approve the letter of representation to be certified by the Head of Finance and Procurement and appended to the audit report as detailed at Appendix 2. 2.4, approve the audit of the accounts which will be certified by the Head of Finance and Procurement and Grant Thornton after this meeting as detailed at Appendix 3. And 2.5, note that the certified accounts will be made available to all members before 31st October 2019, when they will be available on the Council's website. Is that agreed? Thank you very much, members. Um, as I said before, this is the only item I'm actually going to take because it needed a, a decision of the subcommittee. Right. We will um, rebook another uh, pension subcommittee for, for later in the Because of the situation within within the council today, and I'm sure our thoughts are all with um, the family and, and, and husband of, of, of Rona. Um, thank you very much, members, and I'll close the meeting at that.